Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's have fun with one. We're going to get creative here. We've talked about our neutral antique. We've seen this in a number of videos. But we have yet to really look at the metallic and the sparkle colors in the Agilus paints. I'm anxious to see how these come out. So I've got some swatches. I've got four colors in our pro dye, red, green, brown, and black. So let's see if we can find a combination between a metallic antique and a dye color that absolutely pops for us. We have got plenty of swatches here, so let's see if I can pick some pretty combinations for us. With our bronze, let's start right here. I really want to see this on the light brown pro dye. But also, if we're thinking holidays, or even more so for our period folks, let's do a bronze on our green pro dye. That could be a very cool detail for some costuming. How about bright silver? Well, we've got to go with the black on that, absolutely. But how about red as well? Because to me, the nickel hardware on red, it just makes both the hardware and the dye color pop. Over to copper. This is a little bit of a tough one. Well, definitely on black, but also maybe let's go with red here as well. Let's see what that copper will do for us. Pewter, well, black, absolutely. But I'd like to see this on our brown. And last up for our colors, let's go with our gold. Definitely here and definitely here. That's exactly right. That's going to be a nice combination. Well, that leaves us two swatches. We'll just see what we can come up with our glitter. But let's start with these for right now. So let's reset here, add some antique. I can't honestly describe the proportion of paint over antique that we're going to use. It's just too difficult to measure both of these. But we have a couple of things going for us. Well, first off, if we think about it on the spectrum, if we use all antique, no color at all. All paint, we have nothing but paint. So something around, say maybe a five to one combination will work for us. But really, this can even be determined by the rag we use when we clean off the antique after we apply it. So let's just go with this the best way that I know. Let's start right here. We're going to add some of our neutral antique. And that should be enough to, for what we're doing. Okay. Now on our paint, let's add about three drops of this. And one more. Okay. Now let's mix that up. And we've got that mix. Now it's coming out a little more pink than I would like. So let's add maybe two more drops. Bring that color up just a little bit. And again, we're really just eyeballing this. And there we are. That looks to me to be a little bit more metallic, a little bit more copper. All right, let's start right here. Now we're going to go two routes when we apply this. First off, we're going to apply with a rag. We're going to get full coverage. Then we'll come back in with a dauber because at this point, the outside leather, it's not going to get any darker or lighter. So let's start with just a simple cotton rag. And let's apply. Okay, we've got that. Now let's come back with a dauber. Let's see if we can sink some of this antique down into our stamped impressions. Okay, let's clean that with our rag and lightly. Now, all told, if we go with a cotton rag, we're going to remove less of the antique. Say if we go with something like a fleece, we're really going to pull it out. But right there, doesn't really stand out much. But let's let it dry and see what happens. So now let's do our black same way. And yes, antique can be an absolute mess. In fact, this is the last stop for a rag and gloves in my shop. Okay, let's add with our dauber. That's starting to stand out a little more. I like the look on that. So again, let's give that some time to dry. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the remaining four colors. And removing the excess from our last swatch. Actually, I'm starting to like the way a lot of these look. 
But right there, there's our black and our silver. But really, we need to give these time to dry. Let's give our antique about 45 minutes, maybe an hour to dry. We'll take a look, but then let's add a top coat because that'll make all the difference. We'll work on our punch table now. We've got a little bit better light. We've got a good, nice white background. Let's see how we look. Right there, the silver. That's absolutely silver. Notice the sheen that gives us on the leather and the red. That's beautiful. Let's don't forget our edges though. That can be a nice detail. The pewter, roughly the same thing. It's just a little bit more of a subdued color. I like that on the red. It's a nice contrast. Brings that red down just a little bit. But we can certainly see the stamped impression on the black and that silver or that pewter patina. That's beautiful. Now, one of my two favorites. Well, this is our copper. Doesn't really work on the brown. Doesn't really show off. But when we go over to the black, that looks good. Again, that copper sheen, that is beautiful. Can't wait to put that on a project. On our gold, again, I'm not really seeing the metallic in that gold, but it is a nice contrast. And right there, we've got a little bit of a sheen. That might work nicely for holiday projects. And last up, I have to say, I think this is my favorite. So with the bronze on the brown, again, kind of sinks in. We don't really see it. But technically, it does give this an antique look. But right there, the green with the bronze, for us costume folks, that is a beautiful trick. That's going to make some gorgeous projects, okay? Next step, I'm going to put some top coat on these. Let's see how they look. And there's our five colors side by side. I have to say, the copper on the black, that is my all-time favorite. But the top coat absolutely sells it. Okay, let's get a better pick here. So in our first pick, we've got our copper and our bronze. Love the copper. The bronze, it's a little bit more of a subdued color. Doesn't necessarily work on the brown though. Next pick, we've got our silver, our pewter, and our gold. Love the silver on the red, but I like that pewter too. Again, a little bit less color, but the gold on the green, that's going to work for us. And again, that top coat makes that look great. Okay, one more step. We are leaving no stone unturned. How about let's do this. Let's go with some of our glitter. Let's see what happens here. Well, I'm not sure about this, but let's go with our ruby red on our red. Let's just see what happens there. And on our natural veg tan, how about ice, ice blue? I can't, I can't turn that down. So I'm going to take the same set of steps with our glitter. Let's see what happens here. We've added our antique, our top coat, and a little bit of dry time. Actually, that's exactly what I was hoping that red would do. It just sparkles. And the ice ice blue on our natural veg, well, that is a good look, but I think it's going to take a little practice. If we're going to work with this, we need to refine this a little bit. But secondly, if you're not a fan of glitter, I've got it on my rag, on my gloves, on me, my paper. This may not be the best route, but all told, that is pretty cool. The one problem we don't have in Leathercraft is a lack of options. That's exactly right. But I hope there's something here that's going to be just the right touch for your next project. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.